there are a lot of games out there that were never in the spotlight thanks to their technical issues at launch. Even if there were good games hidden underneath bad performance, gaming world is a harsh place and once you leave bad first impressions, it is very hard to convince people that your game has improved. But the developers are not only once hurt by this. Customers that buy these games and trust developers to deliver a great experience are frustrated when they can't play them, especially if they know it is not their fault and they can't do anything about it until creators decide to fix their problems. There are a lot of reasons why this happens. Sometimes publishers need to release games in a certain time period. For example, movie games are launched close to movies premiere and so they don't have time to test them out. Time constraints are also very common if publisher wants to see their game on market in time for holiday season and that naturally leaves developers very little time to take a look at everything that is wrong. New engine, new game developers and major changes to game itself can cause problems as well. At the time, developers simply don't have enough people or resources to catch and fix every bug that is in their game, especially if it is a huge open world game. And sometimes they just wing it and hope that people would not notice or care about bad performance. Recently I was interested in these types of games since I was surprised by low ratings of games that I thought were pretty good only to find out that they launched with tons of bugs and performance problems. And so today I wanted to take a look at three particular games that inspired me to make this video. Fallout New Vegas, Dishonored 2 and Just Cause 3. If you guys enjoyed this video, let me know in the comments and I will make a sequel since there are tons of games like these three out there. And now, without any further delays, let's start with Fallout New Vegas. I got spurs, that jingle jangle jingle Fallout New Vegas is an open world RPG game developed by Obsidian Entertainment and published by Bethesda Softworks. It was released on October 19, 2010 and it is considered by many to be the best Fallout game. However, it did not have an easy development. Even though it uses the same engine as Fallout 3, which means that developers had a lot of resources to work with, Obsidian only had 18 months to create it. In this short time period, they had to learn how to work with new engine, record over 65,000 lines of dialogue, implement factions system, disguises, create new characters, quests, redesign some of the mechanics, for example you can now aim down sights with guns, and a lot more. One and a half year is definitely not enough for such a huge game, therefore it is obvious that game launched with some problems. When we take a look at reviews from 2010, game is praised for its storyline, side quests that offer different ways to solve them, its vast open world and other gameplay elements. However, a lot of critics mention plethora of bugs and various technical problems. Reports of quests not working, AI doing stupid things like turning on you without any reason, choppy frame rate, long loading times, crashes and freezes were frequent. Companions would disappear, NPCs would get stuck in objects and all this coupled with other nasty bugs dragged down an otherwise well-made game to a solid 8 out of 10 in most reviews. Even I wasn't immune to this. When I first played through New Vegas I encountered tons of problems as well. I remember that I had to play the whole game in NCR outfit because NCR randomly decided to turn against me and back then I did not know about console commands or mods. Game breaking mistakes were pretty common at launch and they made it hard to enjoy this game. If you take a look at the discussions on Reddit from that time, people liked New Vegas but all these performance and technical hiccups discouraged them from playing it. Fallout New Vegas is also a prime example of game that needed additional time to reach its full potential. There is a lot of evidence that Obsidian planned a lot more for New Vegas. In an interview with PC Games, its lead designer George Sevier mentions that they had to simplify and tone down some things so that game engine wouldn't be overloaded. Originally you were supposed to choose between three races, human, ghoul or super mutant and you can find traces of other card content in game files as well. Even now there are mods coming out that restore some of this unused potential and you can already find tons of them on the Nexus. It is unknown why Bethesda rushed New Vegas so much but it is possible they wanted it ready for holiday season of that year. They also had Skyrim scheduled for release in the following year and releasing two huge RPGs in the same time period would be unreasonable. However, what Fallout New Vegas and its developer Obsidian will be remembered for is how close they were to getting additional bonus payment from its publisher. If we take a look at Metacritic score, it is sitting at 84 out of 100 points. If New Vegas reached 85 points, Bethesda would pay developers a nice bonus. But that unfortunately never happened. Although Bethesda must have walked out pretty happy out of this deal, 
since Fallout New Vegas shipped more than 5 million copies on launch and it was a huge financial success. Over the time people forgot about this game's technical problems and bugs, with many of them being solved by developers or modders, and it is now remembered as one of the best Fallout games to date. However, we cannot forget about its painful launch and what could have been if only Obsidian's team had enough time to create the game they wanted. Another game on my list is Dishonored 2, developed by Arkane Studio and published by Bethesda Softworks. It was released on November 11, 2016. Just like Fallout New Vegas, at its core, it is a very good game that was overshadowed by its launch problems. When we take a look at Steam reviews, 79% of them are positive, but it was not always this way. At its launch, it had 2000 positive, but also 1000 negative reviews, giving it a mixed rating. Most of these negative reviews are due to bad technical state. Biggest and most common complaints were about its poor optimization. If you had a mid-tier PC, it was almost impossible to run this game with acceptable FPS. Even people with great computers that had no problem running at the other games had problems with this one. And as we know, it doesn't matter how good the game is if you can't run it. Other than performance issues, people also reported audio and graphic bugs, along with weird PC controls. What I was surprised to find out is that when I took a look at reviews from classic gaming media, a lot of them simply ignored all the technical issues, at best they mentioned them at the end, but it is clear that they had no impact on final score. In my opinion, technical state of a game is as important as its content, and if the game has problems, they should be addressed and accounted for in final verdicts. Even though it is possible, the reviewers played it on consoles, where game worked without any problems. What may have caused all these performance issues is new engine that this Unreal 2 runs on, called Void Engine, instead of previously used Unreal Engine 3. It was internally developed by Arkane Studios, based on ID Tech 5, and it was probably a bit harder to work with and optimize it. Good news is that eventually all the performance issues were fixed, and now it is possible to play this Unreal 2 without any problems. This Unreal 2 is very good with brilliant level design that allows you to play as you want, with interesting powers that you can use to cause mayhem wherever you go, or you can use a stealthy approach and cruise through locations without anyone noticing. It is a fun game that awards exploration, creativity, and I would recommend it to anyone that enjoys stealth games. But let's go back to this Honor's launch and its aftermath. Possibly due to its poor PC port, game didn't sell that well. It was the fourth best selling game in its first week of release, but the launch week sales dropped 38%, when compared with original game. These are physical sales only, and since 2012, when first Dishonored was released, digital copies have become a lot more popular, so the actual drop may not be so bad. Currently, Dishonored 2 sold more than 2.5 million copies, which is not bad, but I think that Bethesda expected a bit more from it. But like I mentioned before, if your game doesn't work and people can't play it, it doesn't matter how many good reviews it gets. This Unearth 2 was also released in November, which is prime time for a lot of other blockbusters, and when people saw that this Unearth was not working, they simply moved to other games that were releasing at the same time and forgot about it. Even though Arkane fixed its issues, that first wave of customers that is supposed to bring in sales was lost. I think that Bethesda's review policy of not handing out any review of copies prior to game release also played a part in complicated launch. This Under 2 will be remembered as a good sequel to original game for console players, but I am sure that PC gamers will always remember how bad its original release port was on PC, and that is something that affected both reputation and sales of this Under 2. And last game I will be talking about is Just Cause 3. Just like two previous games, it had a rocky launch. It was released on December 1st, 2015, developed by Avalanche Studios and published by Square Enix. If we take a look at Steam reviews from that time, it is clear that something was wrong. It had mixed rating right at the start, with most of reviews complaining about its abysmal technical state. Worst offender was definitely optimization. People with amazing rigs had trouble running Just Cause 3 on low settings. Frame rate was constantly dropping and then raising to ridiculous numbers, making you feel like you were playing slideshow in one second and Sonic in other. Other than gameplay, cutscenes were also problematic. They liked a lot and it was impossible to enjoy them. Other than that, you had classic freezes, crashes, long loading times and a few bugs here and there. 
from what I read on forums, main culprit of these problems was memory leaking. Even though game recommends to have 8GB of RAM, if you wanna avoid most of these issues, it is best to have at least 16. It looks like developers acknowledged that as well, but instead of fixing it, they decided to increase the recommended amount of RAM, added warning when you launch the game, and worked on DLCs instead. Personally, I think that is a scam tactic, and it should be first priority of developers to fix their game, before working on any additional content. Even to this day, almost 3 years after its release, People are experiencing problems, and it looks like Avalanche Studios really doesn't care. Now they are working on Just Cause 4, and they most likely forgot about its previous installment. I admit that there were few patches after launch that fixed the most obvious problems, but Just Cause 3 is definitely not in top shape. This is also reflected on Steam reviews that are barely over mostly positive mark, and recent reviews are still in mixed zone. Classic gaming media mention these technical problems sometimes, but just like with this under 2, they don't pay too much attention to them, which can be attributed to them playing on high-end rigs that did not really suffer from most of these problems. When it comes to gameplay, Just Cause 3 is a lot of fun, you can destroy a lot of stuff, map is huge, and there are lots of activities to participate in, although it gets a bit repetitive at times, and some of those side activities are chore and boring to play through. It is one of those games that is best enjoyed in small doses. Some people enjoy huge sandbox like this one, so if you're one of them, check it out when it's on sale. Speaking of sales, it looks like all those technical issues didn't really affect them. According to VG Charts, Just Cause 3 sold around 2 million copies, and Square Enix said that it had solid sales, and it looks like they are satisfied with it. I also have my own personal experience with Just Cause 3. I bought this game during summer sale back in 2016, and just like many people before, I wasn't able to play it. Back then I had 8GB of RAM, so I experienced a lot of FPS drops that I originally wanted to push through, but in the end I had to give up. Year later I hoped that Avalanche Studios fixed their mistakes, but nope, it was still impossible to play. This year I upgraded my RAM to 16GB and to my surprise I was finally able to enjoy a smooth experience. But damage was already done and I will be very cautious before buying another Just Cause. So in the end, no matter how good your game may be at its core, if players cannot play it because of launch issues, you're gonna have a hard time, as evident by these three games. I do admit that sometimes these launch problems are inevitable, especially with smaller indie companies, but huge corporations like Bethesda or Square Enix shouldn't release their games until they are in top condition. Even if it happens, developers should work on fixing this as soon as possible, instead of moving to something else and leaving their previous game behind because that way customers lose trust in them and it is a difficult task to regain it back. But even if you encounter such a poorly optimized game, sometimes it is good to take another look at it and give developers a second chance. And yeah guys, I guess that's about it. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm sorry it took me such a long time to make, but I was away for a week and then it took me more than one week to work on this video alone. So that's why there was a huge break between the last video and this one. My next two videos are gonna be is it worth buying for Forest and for Honor and after that I'm gonna be doing a video on Fallout New Vegas uh, about its upcoming mods, Project B42, uh, New California and Frontier. As always tell me in the comments if you enjoyed this video, if you have anything to say about my voice, editing, uh, script, my pronunciation, gameplay sound or anything else, feel free to leave that in the comments like I said and I will be glad to read it. I try to improve these videos as much as I can and I'm having fun making them even though I'm always a bit afraid that you guys are not gonna like them or that I made some sort of stupid mistakes in them. So if you see any of them, feel free to let me know. And yeah guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you did. Tell me what you think about it in the comments. Subscribe for more Fallout and other games content and I will see you next time.